All right, so today we have a mystical 19-inch chassis, and this is from Sharp Image. And the way we can tell that is the fact that it's labeled on the neck board here, Sharp Image Electronics, and it's also labeled Sharp Image here on the main board. But there doesn't appear to be any direct designation for this chassis. This is an absolute 100% clone of the K7000. Everything is in the same location, it's the same cap kit, it's the same components. It's There are some slight differences, like D18 is mounted vertically in here, like the K7000A, instead of being flat across the board. Uh, there's an extra diode in here, D29, that's normally across the side, it's mounted vertically here. Um, things like that, but for all intents and purposes, this is an exact, exact identical clone of a K7000. And uh, did I mention this is 19 inch? It's 19 inch only. There's no 25 inch version. This is a 19 inch Sharp Image K7000 clone. And I'm going to get a K7000 here to do contrast to compare. But there doesn't appear to be any actual designation for what this is. If you actually try and search this online, you get a lot of references to uh, a Sharp Image KT M26, I believe it is. Uh, but all, all the pictures cross reference to this for being the KT uh, M26. But that's actually not what this is. Um, if you get a cap kit or whatever for this, you get the KT M26 cap kit. It's not in any way, shape, or form the correct cap kit for this actual chassis. From what I could research, there's no actual designation for the model of this chassis. It's just a sharp image K7000 clone. Uh, so that being said, let me grab an actual 7000. And we'll do some contrasting and comparing here. Uh, I, I did a lot of research on this. I picked this up uh, online from somebody who said they have a 19-inch uh, uh, Cortec. They actually, I believe they they called it a, a Cortec. I don't recall it was being labeled as Sharp Image, but they said they had a 19-inch chassis, and uh, they were looking to get rid of it. They didn't know if it worked. It was an unknown condition. I said, sure, I'll take it. So I bought it. And I got it, hooked it up, and it worked perfectly, except partial of, uh, from about the middle of the image to the right was uh, much brighter than the left. Uh, so I did a full cap kit, and I haven't tested it since. So the only issue with this, it worked. It had a full square image. It looked fantastic. It was a beautiful picture, except about the middle of the image to the right was uh, noticeably brighter than from the middle to the left. So we had a brightness issue from the middle to the right, which I absolutely assume was, was bad caps. So... I did a cap kit on it and a full reflow, and I haven't done anything else to it since. So we'll test it together after the cap kit to see how it looks after that. Um, and there's more stuff I'm going to go over here in a moment. But let's actually do a comparison and contrast here to an actual K7000. So as you look here, it appears to be the same. We have the B-plus resistor on the inside versus the outside, but the location of the B-plus resistor, uh, the uh, horizontal width coil, you've got R89, R104, R103, uh, the filter cap, your rectifier diodes, you've got the location of the HOT on each one, you've got the same exact voltage regulator on each one, this one there and this one there, same location. You've got the same IC3 and heat sink, you've got the same IC2, IC2 and IC1. Uh, 50, 60 hertz pot is right here and right here. All of the pot locations for the adjustments. Flyback location, you've even got the exact same architecture here for the wiring that runs over to the vertical section. Uh, it's an exact complete clone. <laughs> you get your three color transistors, three color transistors, your three 50 volt, uh, 50 volt 10 bipolar caps for the color. Uh, it's, uh, for, it's a complete clone. I don't know how Sharp, Sharp Image got away with this, but yes, if you need, if you ever come across one of these, the K7000 cap kit is the direct cap kit you want to use. Uh, and as far as the flyback goes, the footprint and the layout, a number of pins and everything is identical to the 7000. So I have a brand new 7000 flyback and for purely testing purposes, we're gonna put a, a, a K7000 flyback in here that's specifically for a K7000 and see if it works in this chassis. If it does, then we'll use that for documentation for future reference if anybody comes across one of these. This also has the issue with um, R101, it's the same exact, um, I, same exact ID, it's R101, 
And if you look here, it suffers from the same fate of extra heat on the board that the regular 7000 does. Uh, but yeah, it's all, I mean, it's the shutdown pots in the same location, shutdown pot, shutdown pot. So being that this is not glued in place, we're going to actually test it and make sure that it reads the 9.8 volts DC. Uh, you go to the uh, cathode of D12, the negative side right here, and you go to ground and it should be 9.8 volts. So we'll adjust that as needed. Uh, but uh, giving this a good look over when I first got it, um, I checked to make sure there are no broken pots, neck boards in good shape, no broken pots, everything is in, intact, no busted traces or pads or nothing from color transistors. Neck boards in good shape, pots are in good shape, uh, relatively clean, there weren't any broken or, or busted solder joints, everything looked fine. So I turned it on and powered it up, not in that order. <laughs> um, and it worked perfectly except for the, bright, the mid to right brightness issue that I talked about. So I went ahead and did a reflow and a cap kit. So we'll test it again, but I wanted to talk about it first before we did that. So yeah, 19 inch only, exclusively 19 inch. And uh, it's just labeled as sharp image. There's no model number that I could find. Now, Bob Roberts has information on this. If you go to his, his website where uh, it talks about what's my monitor or monitor ID page, uh, there is a list of, I'll put a link down below. There's a list of all different chassis types you can use for identification. And this is on there, but it's just labeled as sharp image. Of all the ones you can click on for links of what their, I, the ID of the model is, uh, this one just says sharp image is all it says. When you click on it, it, it talked about how he tried to do research as to what the model number was, couldn't find any information on it. But based off the part numbers of the IC1, IC2, it was identified as being a K7000 clone. And sure enough, yeah, so the cap kit that you want to use is for K7000. We're going to find out together if the flyback can be used from a 7000. And otherwise, yeah, it's, it's a K7000. So I wanted to document this because I haven't seen, I've never had one of these come across the bench before. I, I haven't seen any uh, documentation on this. I've never seen anybody talk about one of these. So it's a good learning experience for all of us because I certainly have never seen one of these and I'm fascinated by it because it's just a complete identical copy. Now there are three, there are, I thought there were two. The Zenith K7000A and the, the Cortec, uh, KTM-26N, something like that. The, the ones that were in the Neo Geo from the factory are a K7000 clone, but they're mirrored. It's a mirrored K7000 where all this stuff's over here and all this stuff's over here. But for all intents and purposes, it's also a direct K7000 copy, but it's just mirrored, which I assume for copyright purposes. I don't know how, sh I don't know how Sharp Image got away with direct copying it, but the K7000A, the Cortec, uh, the KT-26... Uh, 26N, something like that. The one in the Neo Geo. I thought those were the only two K7000 direct copies, but this one is a, a blatant copy. So it turns out that there's three. There's those two in this one. So if you ever come across one of these, uh, it's a direct K7000 clone and you can use all the K7000 parts on it and all the K7000 troubleshooting and trouble trees and flow charts and stuff. So yeah, this is a K7000 that's branded as a sharp image chassis. So now that the cap kit's done, and we talked about it a bit. Uh, the reflow's done. Let's go ahead and power it up and make sure that it's now working still after the rework and make sure that our image of being uh, b too bright from the middle to the right, it's all equidistant uh, size and shape. And, and um, uh, what's the phrase I want to use here? Um, equal brightness, if you will. So let's make sure it's working. And if, if it's good, we'll make sure and adjust it, get it looking very nice. And then we'll swap it out with the K7000 flyback and see if that's compatible with this chassis as well. Hopefully it is. And that way, if you ever come across one of these, you can know for a fact that all the K7000 parts across the board are going to be a direct swap in. But as I say that, yep, 2.7 ohms for R103, same as the regular 7000. This one, yep, uh, 7JR, J2R7, it says on this one. So 2.7, uh, 3.9K. I mean, all of this stuff is the same. You know what? Let's verify before I say all the parts. All right, so this should be, R103 should be 2.7 ohms, and it's 2.9, close enough. Okay, now. Uh, we should have 15 ohms for R104. We should have 3.9 for R89. 3.7, good enough. R101 should be 6.8. That's usually more closer to 5 in circuit. 
Yeah, 4.6. Uh, I lost my connection. But yeah, 5K in circuit, 6.8 out of circuits, what I usually reads, so that's okay. Uh, R88 should be 1.8K, 1.8K. Uh, R96, I believe, should be 1.8K. Yep, 1.8K. Uh, this should be 270 for R87, R97, yep, 270, 269.7, R97, yep. Um, Yep, so that's correct. Um, so yeah, I mean, across the board, K7000 parts, whew, right into this thing. So I, I you know, I, I didn't, I was debating on making this video or not because there was nothing wrong with it. Everything worked. Uh, there really wasn't much to show in, in talks of repairing, but I wanted to document it because I'd never seen one. The fact that it's 19 inch only, the fact that it's a complete total copy of a K7000, I don't know how they got around that or got away with that, um, and just how interesting this is to come across this. So let's get it on a tube and test it, make sure it still works after the, re the recap and the rework and the reflow. If it does, then we will grab a flyback here. Do where, oh, where have my flybacks gone? Here it is. And we'll see if it's compatible with this chassis. If it, if it is, and that's great news, 100% across the board, and uh, we'll have it documented. So I'm going to grab a tube, get this hooked up, and we'll see what goes on or how it works after the rework here. So let's see. All right, so we are on a dedicated K7000 tube and yoke and everything all set up. Uh, we have anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote all hooked up, so nothing's going to explode when we turn it on. Uh, let's turn on the test pattern generator, and let's see if it works. One, two, three. Hmm, not very energetic. Uh, but yes, success. Um, I forgot this tube's all, scr all uh, scratched up. Glass is damaged, but... Right there and right there, it's scratched up, but hey, um, it works. Uh, brightness is too high, but it appears to be, we can see that level versus this level. It's about the same. Okay, I think the cap kit solved our brightness problem. So let's adjust our flyback down to right there. And let's fix our focus, because we're a bit out of focus, right? Oh, man, right there is perfect. Look at that. Sharp as a tack. Okay. All right. It works. It looks like our vertical position is perfect. Uh, right about there, about an eighth of an inch. and A quarter inch, quarter inch. It needs to come down a bit, but we're good for vertical. Uh, let's see if we can adjust our width because it wasn't it was a bit wider before the cap kit And let's get down in the coil down in the coil Increasing the width Outstanding look at that fantastic Need to shift it over slightly to the left, but now we have a perfect Full square image. Put my tool away here. All right, perfect full square image. Uh, let's make sure we have RGB. I never went past this screen before. Hey, there we go. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Glorious. That looks fantastic. Um, all right, so let's turn this off. And I guess uh, since we've talked about uh, the idiosyncrasies and given a good overview, let's swap out that factory flyback with this brand new 7000 flyback and see if it works. Hopefully it doesn't blow anything up. I'm sure if it did, we, we'll all be able to fix it. So um, let's put this one in here and see if it works. If it does, then we can verify with 100% certainty that all of the K7000 normal parts will work on this chassis. So let's find out. Okay, cutting in here because I have the original flyback removed, but there is an anomaly here that we need to address that might put the kibosh on this because this flyback has an extra pin here. I don't know if that's crucial to operation. So we can see this extra pin. There's an extra pin here, right there, that goes, that corresponds to this location here. 
on the chassis. Now, the factory fly, uh, K7000 flyback does not have that pin. Let's zoom out a bit. This one does not have that pin. So if we look here, it's the same footprint and everything, except this one has this extra ground pin over here. Now we can see that it looks like there's a, a space for it right there, because that's where it would be, right there off of that fourth pin, but there's nothing there. So I don't know how crucial that is for operation. But for just for purely uh, testing purposes, let's find out. And a lot of people don't realize you can take these clips and just cut these clips off and it makes the thing so much easier to install. That's what I do, because you don't need these clips. They don't actually hold it in for anything. They're designed to hold it in place. Once you put it in place and, it's, and it sits in, in there, they're designed to hold it in place so when you turn it over it stays in, but you don't... I mean, there's so much surface tension that you really don't have to do that. So, um, this is all the way down. Let's turn it up a little bit, okay. It's always important when you replace these flybacks to turn the, the screen pot up because from the factory these screen pots are always all the way turned down. So you'll turn it on and you won't have an image and you'll try, try to figure out what's going on, what's going on. Well you didn't turn up your screen pot. And this is gonna be a fun one trying to fit this in here. Oh uh, it's probably not I need to remove this plate. Let's try it without that plate in there. And come on. Sometimes you have to get the junk off these pins. before it'll fit down in there. Uh, this cage is in the way and I can't see the pins to line them up. I wonder if this is in fact the right footprint. Uh, I don't know now that I just look at it from the back side. Yeah, it should be. Sure appears to be. There, there's so much of a shadow on here that I can't see from this cage. So we got these two pins here are lined up, but I can't even see any of the other ones. Yeah, I don't know if this is the same footprint, guys. I'm not sure. That was worth a try. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've got the this pin, this pin, and this pin are lined up along with this pin, but I can't even see any of these. They're not even close. Not even close. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna work. Well, that's bad news. Man, this one looks like someone's bent all the pins over. Uh, we may have to bend the pins because this came right out, but all the pins are bent. Uh, why would they go with a flyback that you got to bend the pins on? Uh, that's odd. Is there another mm. pad hiding under this? Nope. 
this is turning into one a much bigger fiasco than I expected it to be. So I wonder if we can get it to fit by bending these pins out a bit slightly. Clean this tip off here. Ugh. Well, let me play around with it a bit and see if I can get it to fit in there. And uh, if not, we'll have to put the original back in and call it done. But let me fidget around here with this, see if I can get it to fit in there. Well, that was a fight. Uh, I got it in there, but it wasn't easy. So a lot of these pins are, are knackered up, as they say over the pond. Are You know, you can see how that they're bent around like Austin Powers' teeth. Uh, this is exactly how it came out. So none of these are straight down. They're all bent one way or the other. So I guess the factory did that? I don't know. Um, but I had to do the same thing on this one. I had to kind of bend these all around. You can see it's roughly the same. So using this one as a template, I bent these around how they needed to be, and then I got it to sit in there. So if we do this again here, it should go right in. He says, there you go. We're in there. And it's seated down and we're not on anything. And that should work. The only anomaly again is this extra ground pin. And it's just a ground. So it doesn't connect to anything but ground. So I'm hopeful this should work just fine. So let's get this puppy soldered in and see if it works. So for reference, the part number on this looks like FA2007. Yeah, I can't, can't say. Oh, there you go. FA2007. It's about all the information that's on here. 940430, uh, 136049. Hmm. All right, let's. I'm not going to use too much solder in case we have to take it back out, just enough to make it operate. If it does work, I'm going to put the original back in, knowing that a 7,000 flyback is a direct drop-in. Because the original flyback works just fine, I'm going to put the original back in. There's no reason not to use it or throw it away. And then we'll have the knowledge that if it does go bad, we can just put a regular 7,000 back in. So, well that worked out. I just ran out of solder. This is all I got left. Okay, I think that'll work. Kind of sits in there crooked a bit, but not a big deal. Let's get our focus wire installed. That goes right here. Let's get our G2 wire installed. That goes right here. And I guess let's get it uh, powered up and see if it works. Okay, will it work with a 7000 flyback? Let's find out. 
Turn that on. Here we go. One, two, three. Well, shit. Nope. Something just uh, flashed. What was that? Is that the fuse? We had neck glow there for a moment. Is the fuse gone? Uh, I saw the neck glow. Then I saw a flash. The fuse is gone. <laughs> so that answers that. You cannot use a 7000 flyback on this. Interesting. And I had my suspicions because of this extra ground pin right here. Well, that's a bummer. Um, I saw neck glow there momentarily. Uh, just real quick, and then I don't know if you, if the flash got caught on camera, but the fuse is now a goner? No, it's not. The heck? The fuse is not gone. Well, I did not hear any... That was very odd. I didn't hear any high voltage. Mm. I didn't hear any high voltage, but... Let's turn the light out here. And let's turn this on again. One, two, three. No. Nothing. Whoa! Holy shnikes! Oh, <laughs> oh man! That's, I'm sure, I regret breathing that in. Whew. Something just went, uh, poof! <laughs> oh man, turn this fan back on. What was that? Oh man, that was our, that was our cap. That was our cap that went kablooey. Well, I guess we can verifiably state that, uh, yeah, you cannot use a 7000 flyback on this. <laughs> well, we learned together here. Holy crap. You know, I shouldn't have left it on that long because we knew it wasn't working, but uh, we got a nice, uh, nice show here. So. <laughs> Well, let's replace, let's put the original flyback back, back in, replace that cap, and make sure it still operates. <laughs> oh my god. That was a fountain. Fountain. All right, let's get this out of here and take a look. All right, so I got this cap out of here, and oh man, this thing, this thing is still hot. Man, this, this thing roasted quick and spit all of this electrolyte right off the top. Whew, man. So we are going to have to remove this flyback. Now, this is a ground pin, and it's connected to ground through the flyback, so it shouldn't make a difference. So I mean, if you... Uh, hold on, I gotta go back to... There we go. See? So the ground pins are still part of it, but it there must be some type of output because that cap is directly tied to this right there directly to it off the ground and this comes around to here which goes across our 90 which off goes off who knows where so yeah i thought about if we could try and maybe put a jumper across here or something but it's already connected to the grounds inside so however this functions it's not going to work so we got to put the original flight back back in so I guess if this goes bad, uh, if the flyback ever goes bad, I don't know how, I guess it's just a paperweight, kind of like the, 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 uh, Zenith, the Zenith K7000, but I don't know. Um, what is obvious is that we cannot use a standard K7000 flyback. And we have found that out together. <clears throat> I just hope we didn't damage anything else. But like I say, even if we did, I can fix it. My desoldering station's acting up here. Can I 
gonna have to use a little braid on this. Mm. Yep. Come on, you piece of junk. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, piece of junk. Mm. Yep. It's not clogged up. It's not empty, or it's not full. Uh, it's got a new mm. new pad in it, and it just decides to work when it wants to. So we're gonna have to use a little braid. Now you don't want to push too hard. When, you, when you're using the braid like this, let the heat do its work. Because if you push real hard, that's how you damage pads. Just lay the braid on there and apply the heat and let the heat do its work. You don't want to shove or push because that's how you break those pads off. And now this should just pop right out. Yep, okay. Let's take this back out. this back off. And we'll put this back in the box and use it for a different project. Now let's grab the original one and put it back in. And hopefully we didn't damage anything. Actually, you know, before we do that, <laughs> let's put a new cap in. Uh, what is that? 25-1000. So let's grab... The 1000s and 25 1000. Let's use this one 35 1000. I don't want to use a 50. We could use a 50, but eh, let's throw a 50 in there. That won't hurt anything. Okay. It goes in thusly. Oh, I ran out of solder. That's right. Okay. Uh, Got a brand new one here. Scoop thing gets this damn thing out. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's done. Man, this thing just... Whew, all the smoke out of that one. And this should fall right back in place here. Yep. <laughs> Easy peasy. Okay. I'm not going to use a ton here, just enough to secure it in place and I'll reflow it properly if we uh, get this working again and don't need to do any other repairs. Because I have to come back and clean all this up anyway, so. Hopefully we didn't do any more damage, but if we did, I can figure it out and fix it. I just make for a more interesting video. I had my suspicions and my doubts after finding out that this has this extra ground pin. I had my doubts, and looks like my doubts were warranted. 
because it did not like not having that ground. Okay, well, let's hook it back up. Oh, well, no, let's not hook it back up. Let's hook our wires back up. Then we'll hook it back up. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. And focus wire. First we need to grab, here it is. Okay. All right, now let's hook it back up and see if we did any more damage or if it works and go from there. All right, hooked back up, fingers crossed, nothing uh, else got taken out. It turned the fan off because it'll blow into the camera mic. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Okay. We got high voltage. But there's a noise, a high-pitched noise that wasn't there before. We have no image. Well, crap. Let me turn this off. There's a high-pitched noise, and we have no image. It's not this. Let's turn the flyback up. Yeah, flyback is all the way up and we get nothing. Do we have any heater voltage? No, we do not. Nothing. Oh, darn it. Well, this just got more interesting. <laughs> Let's see if we can figure it out. Well, it appears that swapping in that K7000 flyback onto that chassis um, made me pay the ultimate price. It took out the tube. So, if you recall back, I mentioned that I had seen a flash, and I went back and reviewed the footage, and the flash came from the neck. And then that shortly afterward, we know we popped the cap here. Um, so, and you know, we hooked the chassis back up, we had no neck glow, no heater, no nothing. So I thought, hmm, let me roll the tube out. So I went and grabbed the actual 7000 and hooked it up, and same thing. No neck glow, no heater, no nothing. If we turn this on, uh, we'll just go ahead and turn that on, and turn it on. Here we go, one, two, three. Comes right on. If we turn the light out, the flyback is turned all the way up right now. You can hear it running. We got good high voltage. Uh, but the neck is dead. Nothing. No heater glow, no nothing. Nothing on the image. Nothing. So we uh, somehow killed the tube. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I think the heater circuit in the tube died. So, um, casualty of testing, you know, that's just how it goes. So I need to get a different tube and hook this up and see if it works on a different tube because this one is now dead. Well, before I call it quits, I went ahead and hooked up the rejuvenator just to see what's going on with the heater. So if we turn this on, I've got the voltage set to 6.3, exactly where it's supposed to be. If we go to leakage for heater, watch what happens. Doot, pegs out. So. The heater is done. The tube is shot. Uh, we destroyed the heater by testing that K7000 yoke on this chassis. So, lesson learned, don't do that. <laughs> so, all right, well, um, I'm gonna, you know, later on down the road, I'll steal this yoke, put it on a different tube or do something. But that's unfortunate because this was a very nice looking image uh, as we saw before. Uh, but all right, well, let's grab another tube and try on a different tube. All right, so I went through my stash and I have four K7000 tubes, but they're all the seven pin skinny neck. The only K7000 setup that I had to, for testing the nine pin fat neck, uh, I just destroyed it. So <laughs> I had to grab a Cortec uh, KTN-2001 tube, which has got a compatible yoke on it. Uh, for reference, this is what the chassis looks like, uh, Cortec KTN-2001. 
uh, and I slaved on our chassis so now we can test it and see if it still operates and runs um, and see where we go from here. I don't have a test panel generator hooked up right now because I just want to see if it powers on and we get net glow. Uh, if we do then I'll hook up the TPG and we'll see what the image looks like. So for now we're ready to go so let's uh, turn our light off and I'm pretty sure it's going to work. I think we just destroyed our other tube but let's see one two three. It comes to life. Oh, and neck glow immediately. What do we get? Oh, Son of a <sighs> dang it. We caused collapse. <laughs> oh, god, you knew you couldn't get out of this unscathed. So, we blew up something on the chassis and we blew up the tube. Uh, well, live and learn. <laughs> that's, that's why it's a risky experiment, but. Well, uh, we know the tube is gone. Uh, can, can we at least salvage the chassis again and get it working? So we have collapse to deal with now, and let's see if we can figure that out. Well, I'm pretty sure I found the problem, uh, but I don't know for sure. But let's go over the details of how I came across this uh, discovery, and we'll join together in the knowledge of whether or not it fixes the problem. But basically, we know from previous experience that when you have complete vertical collapse on the K7000, the most likely scenario is R91 or R92. Uh, being this is a clone, it still has R91 or R92, but they're different ratings. So normally they're about 1.2 ohms a piece. But on this particular chassis, they read, uh, let's see if we can get all this in frame here. So R91 is right here, it should be 1.2 ohms on a normal K7000, but on this one, it's 4 ohms. But 4 ohms isn't enough to cause complete collapse. So that should be okay. Now R92 is right here. And that's also four ohms. So those should be okay. So next you move on to D13 and D14. Uh, in this case, D13 is right here. And we get 0.5 voltage drop, which is what you should get. Now if we go to D14, we got what appears to be a short. However, D14 is not the problem because D14 is attached to R90 right here and R90 goes off to the ground. So if you read across R90, it reads, it's a 47 ohm resistor and it reads 47 ohms. So if you go back to the diode and go back across D14, there's your 45 ohms, give or take. So it's, the diode should be okay. If you follow R90 across this way, it runs down through here, along this way, and it goes right here to D27. Now D27 is a Zener diode. If we check D27, dead short. If we go to ohms, one ohm. So if we take D27 out of circuit, Push that guy out of there. All right, now we'll test the pads and the pads are not shorted. Right now I think we're reading through one of the uh, adjustment pots, but there you go. Now if we go back to D13 or D14, D14, now we get a correct reading. 0.34 voltage drop. So, yeah, I think our Zener diode is shorted D27. Now, if we go directly to the diode, where it's, it's out of circuit, uh, we get short, one ohm. So D27 is definitely shot. Now, is that the cause of our problem? I don't know, but it's definitely part of the problem. We're going to have to figure out uh, if we can replace this, I don't know what the rating of this is, what we should replace it with, I have no idea. But I'll see if I can't figure it out and, and get a replacement part. Um, we can also verify that we don't have an issue with uh, IC2 or the uh, vertical IC. And just make sure that we don't have any pins shorted the ground that shouldn't be. And that just... There we go. 
All right, now as far as the diode is concerned, yep, that's shorted. Okay, well, we'll set that aside along with our blown up capacitor. And let's just check to make sure we don't have any shorted legs on our uh, vertical IC. I have not done this yet. So if we go to ground and we, this one here should be ground. We should have no ground. Uh, actually, this is ground. And we should have no continuity to ground on any other pin. So here is pin, I think that's two. It doesn't matter, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so uh, the IC should be okay. Uh, IC two. Okay. Okay, that should be ground. Okay, so I think that is our problem. Uh, but now the question is going to remain where do I find one and what the rating is and that kind of fun. So let me see if I can do a little research and try and figure that out because this is not on the regular K7000. If you look at. Uh, let's grab this one. You see there's no. D27 there. Uh, so I gotta see if I can figure out what the equivalent of that is on the 7000 and see if maybe I can rob one. Um, yeah, I don't know if there is an equivalent diode on the standard 7000. So I'll have to see if I can figure it out and come up with some type of solution and I'll come back and show you what I did. Alright, so I found a replacement. If we test this again here, we can see that this one is shorted. That's the original. Here is our replacement. Reads correctly. Now the part number on this, it's microscopic. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it here. Probably not. But it's, uh, I don't know, get my dirty hands out of the way here. It's, uh, it says 1N4. 1 in 4. Uh, it's 1 in 4. 742. I don't even know if you can see it. 1 in 4. 742. Alpha. So I found a replacement here off a donor chassis. And we're going to install that and see if that fixes our problem. Uh, so let's come on. I need new tweezers. Something awful. Yeah, something. I need new tweezers. Something awful. I can't even pick it up. No. Uh, just take these tweezers and throw them in the garbage. We need to bend that in a bit. See if that'll work. God, no, we're just gonna not use those at all. Solder that puppy in. Okay, so with that one in there, let's test D14 again. And it should read correctly. There we go. So, all right. Let's get this back on the tube and test it out. If it works, then uh, uh, I guess we could say we dodged a bullet with something else being destroyed, but we exploded this cap, 
we destroyed a diode, and we destroyed a picture tube heater circuit. <laughs> Uh, well, let's uh, hopefully this will work now and we can get back to where we were and uh, just be down a tube. So let's see All right, so with that replacement diode installed, let's see if that fixes our collapse problem We'll turn on the test pattern generator and here we go one two three Okay, it comes to life. What do we get? Yes <laughs> All right um, well, it looks like we're somehow oh, well, we're too wide and too tall because this is a different tube. <laughs> I'm still thinking of, still expecting to see the image that we had on the tube before we before we destroyed it. So yes, okay, we are back in action. I'm not going to worry about adjusting anything because it's going to come right back off the tube. But um, I think we're good. I need to adjust the 50, 60 hertz pot a little bit again. Let's let's hit that here. And voila, okay. Uh, vertical size, yes. Vertical, let's hold. Position, vertical size, got it. Well, look at that, back in action. <laughs> so we uh, put in the factory flyback and just destroyed everything. We destroyed the picture tube we were testing on. We exploded this cap. We shorted this diode. After replacing all that, uh, putting the original flight back back in, it's back and working like it never, like it nothing was wrong. Uh, unfortunately, we lost a tube. Um, so, oh well, live and learn. That's a uh, you know dangerous game you play when you swap out parts. You're not sure what's going to happen. But we are back in business. Let's try. Um, an actual PCB. Let's plug in Mortal Kombat. And there we go. And we're too we're too bright. But uh, we're also colors are way wrong. Uh, let's see if we can shift horizontal position over. Yep. Uh, again, I'm not worried about adjusting colors or anything, but we have full perfect square image. Let's make sure that we actually have um, Good width, which it looks like we do. Okay, yep, almost perfect. We need to shift it over a little bit to the left, but all right. So we have climbed back out of the hellhole that we were in. Uh, we are only down a cap and a diode, other than destroying a tube. <laughs> That's really the real down downer of all this. But hey, at least we learned something. We all learned together. We now have knowledge of this uh, chassis. I don't want to call it the, was it KT-M26? I don't want to call it that because I don't think that's what it is. It's just the Sharp Image K7000 clone. But uh, we're back up and running. Uh, no worse for wear except for a destroyed tube. So live and learn. That's how things go. Um, otherwise, I appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more, and I appreciate it.